Yuri Kochiyama was born on May 19, 1921 in San Pedro, California. She grew up in the same town that she was born in and by nature was a humble child. Her family had wealth and affluence, which she was embarrassed by, so she would make her mother drop her off a few blocks away from the school so her peers wouldn't see their fancy car. She attended San Pedro High School where she was the first female student in the student body. She graduated from Compton Junior College where she majored in journalism and English. Yuri was a Christian and taught Sunday school. On December 7, 1941, she noticed her Sunday school students looking at her differently and they agreed to cut the lesson short that day. She arrived home shortly before three white men from the FBI knocked on the door of her home asking if her father was there. He was sleeping in the back bedroom after coming home from the hospital the day before having had ulcer surgery. After telling these men her father was sleeping, they barged past her and woke him up, instructing him to get his bathrobe and slippers on and to come with them immediately. This was the day the Japanese had bombed Pearl Harbor and her father was under suspicion for being an enemy spy. Yuri found that many other Japanese families had had their father, brother, or son taken away that day as well. Her father was kept between the terminal island was kept at the Terminal Island Penitentiary or the hospital where he was labeled as a prisoner of war. Yuri's mother feared for his safety while he was in the hospital because he was hospitalized alongside of victims of the Pearl Harbor bombing. He returned home on January 20th, 1942 and died the next day. During the war on the direction of President Roosevelt and Order 9066, 120,000 Japanese Americans were rounded up and descent was sent to what the government called internment camps. Yuri and her family were first sent to Santa Anita Assembly Center in California, which used to be a racehorse barn and stable. Here they waited until they were sent somewhere more permanent, Jerome Relocation Center in Arkansas. Yuri lived here for two years and under very un-American conditions. Privacy was pretty much non-existent and food was rationed. The camp was all Japanese and Yuri found camaraderie there with her peers. She passed the time being of service, welcoming new people to the camp, cheering up others, and writing her own column for the newspaper titled Nisei in Kaki. She also wrote letters to Japanese soldiers during the war to show support and keep their spirits high. Some of the men prisoners in the camp were able to join the military. A USO was established, which is where Yuri met the love of her life, Bill Kochiyama. He and Yuri were married after the camps closed in March of 1946. The couple moved to New York in 1948 and lived in the housing projects in Uptown. Many of Yuri's neighbors were Latino and black. Even after all she had experienced in her life, it was here in New York City where she found a love for civil rights. While working as a waitress with a majority of other black waitresses, she shared her experiences while she had lived in Mississippi. She was surprised to learn that even a U.S. soldier in uniform, if he were black, were not allowed to be on the main street in Mississippi. This was an eye-opening moment for her as she realized the full extent of black segregation. Every weekend, as an adult, Yuri entertained company and social gatherings in her home. Eventually, Yuri invited activist speakers to attend these gatherings and speak about civil rights. Being raised in this environment provided an opportunity for Yuri and Bill's six children to be activists as well. In October 1963, Yuri had an opportunity to meet Malcolm X. The meeting was not planned, and she took a big risk being a Japanese woman by asking to shake his hand. She and Malcolm started a friendship that day that lasted until M Malcolm's final day. On March 5, 1965, Yuri held Malcolm's head in her lap after he had been shot in Manhattan. Yuri continued her life as an activist for equal rights for Japanese, Blacks, and Puerto Ricans. 
She had a huge role in gaining reparations for the Japanese Americans who were forced into concentration camps. Yuri died in her sleep at her home in Berkeley, California on June 1st, 2014 at the age of 93.